dear students in this lecture i will try to explain you about the role of cell membrane there in the cellular transport mainly the bulk transport process which happens in the eukaryotic organisms first we look at how cell membrane playing a role there in the formation of pseudopodia what is pseudopodia they are the projections or extensions of the cell membrane that in turn facilitate the movement of the cell so you can able to see in the right hand side the protrusions or extensions of the cell membrane forming into structures called as a pseudopodia okay so this is a pseudopodia next point formation of new pseudopodia takes place continuously in the advancing end that is the end at which the cell is moving the pseudopodial formation is also depend upon the streaming movement of the cytoplasm the streaming movement of the cytoplasm is technically referred as cyclosis which is again a process which takes place only in the eukaryotic organism so the cyclosis and pseudopodial mediated extensions of the plasma membrane will be taking place that helps in the further movement of the cell the old pseudopodia will be retracted when new pseudopodia are formed that is the old pseudopodias will be just taken inside and new pseudopodias will be formed in the front side in which direction the cell is moving for this process of the pseudopodial formation energy is required in the form of atp the next point and the last point is what are the organisms in which the pseudopodia is formed pseudopodia is formed mainly in the amoeba in the right top end corner you can able to see the pseudopodial formation there in the amoeba other macrophage macrophage is this one in the right hand side end corner macrophage and the pseudopodial formation are common in the different types of white blood cells such as neutrophil eosinophils etc the pseudopodia forms temporary finger like projections that is helps in the capturing of the other organism say for example for the amoeba pseudopodia helps in the formation of a food vacuoles later which can be used by the amoeba like that in the wbc if you look at this pseudopodial formation in the wbc will help in capturing certain pathogenic bacteria that may be entering there into the blood stream before going into the various other transport mechanisms first we try to understand what is the major differences that have been existing between a passive transport and a active transport system that have been operating there in the microorganisms especially the passive transport is the one which is operated without any kind of a external energy input however active name itself says that it is actively transported with the help of energy first point movement of molecules from a high concentration to low concentration that is along the concentration gradient may be mediated by a passive transport system however movement of molecules from a low to high concentration automatically their energy is required that is mediated by the active transport this is meaning against the concentration gradient the nutrient is transported inside look at the second point for the passive transport usually carriers are not commonly required membrane remains passive during the whole process of transport however there is a lot of different proteins will be playing a role there in the active transport this kind of proteins are technically referred by a term called as permeases so the next point is related to energy as i already told it doesn't require any energy however in the active transport energy in the form of atp is required for the process to operate passive transport as its energy independent is a very slow process however here this one is a rapid process it takes place very fast it facilitates transport of of all diffusible substances whereas active transports are commonly involved in selective uptake of nutrient that are required for the metabolic processes passive transport is totally a physical process whereas active transport is a vital or a important process for the life of the organism example for physical process passive process or passive transport includes diffusion 
osmosis facilitated diffusion only in the facilitated diffusion a carrier protein may be involved in all other things that is diffusion and osmosis there is no any carrier protein involvement is there in the passive transport whereas in active transport there are various kinds of transports are there group translocation then bulk transport bulk transport is the one which is operating only in the eukaryotic organism the bulk transport includes the exocytosis endocytosis a form of endocytosis is called as a phagocytosis and pinocytosis exocytosis means sending something outside exo endocytosis means taking something inside phagocytosis is again taking some specific particles or some bacteria inside that is they are getting phagocytized inside the cell pinocytosis refers to cell drinking drinking of a liquid portion by the cell or intaking of a liquid portion by the cell is referred as phenocytosis now we will look at into what are vesicles how they aid in the transport of some substances or proteins within the cell and even outside to the cell so mass transport of large particle cells liquid by engulfment and forming into a vesicle and this particular transport is referred as a bulk transport so what is a vesicle vesicle in a simpler terms cell membrane fold on itself to create a membrane enclosed bubble like sac called as a vesicle so this is a vesicle just look at here how a vesicle has been present and how it is moving so this is large thing is the vesicle this vesicle is moved with the help of a motor protein so this kind of a vesicle formation and movement or transport will be aided by motor protein and it will be commonly taking place inside the cells so the next point cell uses the vesicle to swallow or expel certain contents outside the cell vesicles divide some material from the rest of the cytoplasm and transport those material from one place to another or within organelles by using some special kind of a motor protein called as a kinesin there are two types of motor proteins that are commonly involved in this process one is a kinesin and another one dynein they use atp as energy and they will be using the microtubule as a platform so microtubule one of the component of cytoskeleton is serving as a platform upon which the vesicle is carried on to another location by using a motor protein that is kinesin so this transport will be powered with the help of atp there are two types of motor protein present one is kinesin another one is a dynein these vesicles are formed and recycled as and when needed by the cell this mechanism of movement of the particles large particles cells and liquids from one place to another within the cell or outside to the cell is called as a bulk transport and it's a energy dependent transport this kind of a transport is very unique there and present only in the eukaryotic system and not in the prokaryotes now we will look at into the points related to kinesin and dynein cytoskeleton includes different components like actin intermediary filaments and microtubules microtubules acts as a tracks for two classes of motor proteins namely kinesins and dyneins kinesins are moving along the microtubule usually carrying the cargo such as the organelles and vesicles from center of the cell to its periphery whereas dynein is having an opposite action it is important in sliding the microtubules relative to one another during the beating of cilia and flagella on the surface of some eukaryotic cell apart from that they play a role in carrying the cargo from periphery to the center of the cell so this is a small difference that have been existing between these two kind of motor protein so that has been depicted here there in a diagram kinesin is the one which is carrying the things to the periphery whereas dynein is having opposite function which is carrying the things from periphery to internal to the cell both the things required atp as an energy and microtubule as a platform for the process to happen these are all other differences that have been stated between the dynein as well as kinesin protein most of the things we have already covered in the previous slides in this bulk transport finally 
we look at what are the major types of bulk transport that have been happening in the members that has been separated or categorized based on the size of the endocytic vesicle that has been transported during the process. So these are the, this one is a phagocytosis and all other things that have been listed are phenocytosis. You can look at the size of the molecule that have been transported in this process. If you look at the macro phenocytosis, it is more than 1 micrometer whereas clathrin and caveolin independent endocytosis process can be taken up with the help of 90 nanometer sized particles also. Other two phenocytosis have been noted here. With this the vesicle and its mediated bulk transport process that has been taking place in the eukaryotes portion will be ended.